We are working on the diagnostic procedure today. Uh, I had to do a few no crank, no starts this week. And uh, both of them were figured out relatively quickly. So I just wanted to go over my procedure and uh, how we get there and how we get there so fast. So uh, the first step in the procedure is identify concern, including symptoms. Uh, here we have a 2004 Buick LeSabre. There is the wiring diagram for the starter. It is a no crank, no start. Uh, we're going to go over, verify. Chin, turn the key. Nothing. So, we're going to go... Back to the diagram, back to the procedure. Make sure we don't overlook anything silly or too easy. So, identify concern, including symptoms. So we did that. The next step is to take the, the necessary time to fully understand the theory of operation of not only the systems affected, but how the systems work together to complete a specific task. We're gonna go over that quickly in the diagram because everything's there that we need to know so over here to the diagram try to get some reasonably good light here there we go so looking at the diagram we have the battery and we have two leads that come off the battery one goes to the ignition switch fuse which is a 15 amp fuse in the rear block under the under the seat the other lead comes over to the underhood fuse block goes through the start circuit breaker through the relay the switch side of the relay and then down to the starter solenoid and that is our signal to make that starter work the other lead coming off the distribution box here the underhood fuse block is the b plus to the starter that's the one that's going to carry the majority of the amperage for the starter so let's see how this works this other one over here is a pcm battery fuse that's a 10 amp fuse it says it's hot and run or start and that controls the solenoid side of the relay so that's what activates the relay and closes the switch so that's the feed for that side. If you come down follow this yellow wire over to here, this is the starter control at the PCM. And you can see the ignition switch fuse feeds 12 volts through the ignition switch. When it's in the start position, it tells the PCM that you want that vehicle to start, and then the PCM actually controls the starter relay on the ground side of the solenoid side of the relay. So, now that we know how it kind of works, we're going to go back over here. We did step two, take the time necessary to fully understand the theory of operation. So we did that. Number three, using the information gathered in the previous steps, list all of the possible causes for the concern and associated symptoms. Well, what's going to cause a no-crank? Bad starter? Sure. Faulty ignition switch? Sure. Ignition fuse? Faulty relay? Faulty circuit breaker? Faulty PCM fuse? Dead battery? PCM not, not telling it to turn on due to maybe an anti-theft issue? Uh, broken wire? You know, so there's a lot of things that could cause this. So where do we start? So back here, now we know what could cause it. Number four is using the list of possible causes, determine the ease of testing of each cause. Now, in this circuit here, what would be the best way to determine where the fault lies quickly? We could hook a scan tool up, see if the PCM is even telling it to start. We might even be able to see our ignition crank sense to see if the ignition switch is working. 
Uh, we might even be able to use bidirectional controls to actuate the starter relay. We could probably get access to these fuses and check for power quick. We could even lay under the car and get a test light on that solenoid signal wire and see if we have a faulty starter. But uh, I don't like crawling around on the ground if I don't have to. Scan tool takes time and energy. I can do everything I need to do here for this first set of, of tests right here at the starter relay. And that's what we're going to do today is test the circuit, figure out what's missing on one of these four legs. Because if any one of these is missing, that car isn't going to crank. So that's where I want to start because I can isolate where the problem lies on one of these four legs and then continue from there. So, step number five, start your testing with the least invasive and most inclusive test you were able to use. So, think what I think I'm gonna do, which is the easiest thing for me to do, is get a test light and see if I've got both these powers when I'm cranking and if I have a good path to the starter and if I'm getting the PCM to ground that circuit when I want it to. So let's go ahead and do that. So grab this, bring it with us. So what can I test here? Key off, engine off. I know for sure I should have one of these four should have battery voltage and light a test light without going any further. So that's what I'm going to do. So to the legend here says the start one relay, which is what our diagram says, is number 36. So this is number 36. Well... I don't crawl around on the ground anyway. Yeah, that's in no man's land now. We'll get it back. So the first thing I want to do is hook my test light up. I'm going to hook it up to, hopefully, a good ground. This looks like a decent spot. So we got our ground on. We're going to verify that that works. We'll check for light of light at the battery stud. So we got that. So then it's never a great idea to uh, just jab a test light into there. So I'm using one of these, but uh, a paper clip used gently will work too. You just be gentle, don't be dumb and uh, ruin those terminals. But if you got the right tools, just use the right tools. So that's what we're gonna do here. I have my test lights hooked up here, and we're not gonna ground that out. So now I'm gonna look for 12 volts at every one of these, no light. No light, no light, no light. Well, so we're missing something. So, back to the diagram, we're missing power on this leg, because this should have power even with the key off. This comes right from the battery over here. So, we're going to go to the start circuit breaker. Which, according to this, is number 41. Right there. I don't know if it'll focus or not, but right there. Number 41. 41. And we don't have power because the circuit breaker's not there. So... Put our circuit breaker back in and we have power so now we can go to step two right plus we fixed the car but 
let's finish our test at the relay. Since we're here, let's just knock it out. So, I know that is going to light my test light. And if I look at the relay, which is under the car. All right, well, 20 minutes later, found the relay. Don't drop them. They go into Never Never Land. So, got the relay back. Uh, you can see here, 87 and 30 is the switch side. And 85 and 86 is the solenoid side of this. So, looking at the bottom, we have 30 here, and 87's here, and then 86 and 85 are on the other corners. So, we already verified that our constant power, 12 volts, is here. Rusty Buick, so we got to get a good ground. So, we light the light with our constant feed. And now we're going to go turn the key on and see if we have this hot in runner start at the relay. Key on. So now we should be able to go back over here to this relay. And I know I have my constant here. And then one of these other three is going to have key on power, and that one does. So now I know I have key on power there. So I have key on power in this hole. I have constant in this hole. And I know this one and this one is the switch. So that is going to be my load to the starter. That's my key on power. So that is going to be my ground controlled by the PCM to control the solenoid side of this relay. I'll show you that again here. The little diagram matches that one. So now I know I can move my test light. Again, no fancy tools needed here. So I'm going to put my test light on the battery positive, and I'm going to check my ground, and that works. So now I know these other two, one of these, is going to be my load, which is the one on the right, which is the starter solenoid. So if I put that test lead in there, it's got a path to ground. This is a 200 milliamp test light, and it'll light nice and bright because that solenoid is a way higher amperage than 200 milliamps. So it'll light that nice and bright. So I know I have a good path all the way through the solenoid to ground. So then I'm going to come over here and that is my PCM control wire. See here on the diagram, we're going to go off this yellow wire to the PCM and the PCM grounds it. Then we're going to watch that test light. And if that's a good circuit, that test light will light up. So, in the crank position, the test light lights up. So now I know I have my 12-volt constant. I've got a path to ground through my solenoid. I've got key on power to the relay, and the PCM's grounding it when it's in crank. So I don't even really need to verify this. I know it'll start, right? Put my relay, put my circuit breaker back in that somebody left out. That's why it wouldn't crank, right? So... Let's move all our test equipment. Now that we verified the, the complete circuit, all four legs of that relay, we're going to grab our relay. And it really doesn't matter which way you put it in. So you can see, you can put it in upside down or not. I'm kind of a picky, so I like to make it match the ones there. So that's in. Everything's back together. Let's go through our diagnostic process again one more time. So we identified the concern. We took the time necessary to understand the system. 
Using the information gathered in the previous steps, we list all the possible concerns. Using the list of concerns and causes, we determine the ease of testing of each cause. We started our testing at the least invasive, most inclusive test we were able to use. Document the information gathered during the first round of tests and review. So what we found was a missing circuit breaker. We replaced it. Now everything at the relay says that this vehicle should crank. So we made a decision and we decided no more testings needed because we found the problem and fixed it. So let's go start the car. Success. All right, well, so that's the, you know, just breakdown of the diagnostic process and a simple four post automotive relay. Uh, getting good at testing right at these relays will save you so much time and energy. Uh, it's probably one of the best electrical tests you can do on in any situation that you have that kind of access. Uh, so get out there, get some practice. Uh, let me know if this helps. Thanks.